Hey there! Thank you for joining me on Everything Gem. It's really late. I think it's okay. It says it's 1 36 a.m. on Friday. And um, I, oh my gosh, I had a really long day. And I thought I was going to record earlier. And then I got caught up talking to my friend. And um, I'll explain that all later. But I ended up not recording and I had stuff to do because I was going to go to boxing and that's where I was at today. But before I talk about that, if you haven't already, again, this is Everything Gem, the Red Moon Woman. Uh, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. Uh, so I was at the Battle of the Rising Stars at the Quiet Canyon in Montebello today with my friend James. And then after that, I was stopping by a show um, that the Burger Surveillance dude did, and that was in Whittier. And I was just stopping by to meet him, and I didn't get to meet him anyways, but that's all right. So I was so tired, I came home and I slept for like about an hour, not even an hour, but a little while. And then I got up because I have to do my show because tomorrow I have a big day too. And I don't want to miss too many things. Even though this week I did do Blaine's show. Let me see. On Monday I sat in from 9.30 to 11. And then on, mm, I think it was Thursday, I was there the whole day. So that was pretty cool. I really am enjoying that. And he is on Chaotic Radio at chaoticradio.com. You can listen to it there. And I think I posted the links. Ah, uh, I think I posted one of the links. And you could um, check out his podcast. You can find them on the shows and stuff like that. But anyway, I was there on Monday at 930 and then Thursday the whole day. And that's actually kind of fun. I kind of like that. Um, that's going to work out really well for me. I guess right now I'm thinking that, or he told me that, you know, I can come in, sit in on his show like I was, or, um, you know, have my own show or decide how I want to be involved with the station. So that's pretty cool. Are these bubbles real annoying? Because they're kind of starting to annoy me and I was just trying them out a little bit. Let's see. Okay, now they're gone. It's because I don't have any color or anything. I'm trying to do the background. But I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if we should do it yet. We hung the paper. We got that far, but we haven't got much further than that because there's always lots of stuff to do. Um, anyway, let me see what else. So, um, again, that's Blaine Hubble's show on Chaotic Radio from 8 to 11 in the morning. I don't think I could actually talk that long. Well, I don't have to talk that long. Mostly he has to talk that long. But I guess if I had to talk that long, I probably could talk that long. What do you think? Maybe, huh? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so anyways, um, also, and then I was on the radio kicking it old school. Um, that's the martial arts program, and that is at kcaradio.com. It's really KCA Radio 1050 AM, the station that we use no listener behind. However, we're going to say that it's kcaaradio.com because you can listen to me live there, or if you search it on TuneIn. Uh, or you can watch it on Ustream whenever you decide, but you always have to search KCAA if you're doing it on Monday at 5 o'clock. It's from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Um, and that's only going to be for like two or three more weeks, so it's kind of a good thing because as that one kind of winds down, we're going to have the Masters Hall of Fame event, which is going to be on August 1st. Um, it's a red carpet event in which we um, honor, let me see, excellence in martial arts. Yay! So we're going to talk a little bit about something that's kind of related to that today as well. Um, so what else am I supposed to say to you? Oh yeah, Master's Hall of Fame already said that. Oh yeah, my friend at Kaizen Dojo, he's having his fundraiser on Sunday. So I'm going to be there on Sunday and he's fighting 40 people and he's raised over $10,000 for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And that's really fabulous. So um, I'm really excited to be there. And that's um, William Ford. And that's in Torrance, and I think you can probably find it on my website or on my Facebook or something like that. But he's a good guy. Um, and so far, we're still looking at surgery around the end of August. But that's going to probably be over at the City of Hope now because I have my appointment on Wednesday. And I can't remember if I talked about it already, but I had it on Wednesday, and you can probably find that information on my vlog as well. I hope you guys have had a good week. 
Um, we're going to talk about Garrett Holive. Holive, I'm not really sure how to say that, and I can't figure it out yet. And he's a he's a guy who has Down syndrome. The Down syndrome, the Down syndrome dude is what my notes say. Um, so we'll be talking about that. I think he wants to. It's MMA. He wants to fight MMA. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, like I said. Also, Afghanistan interpreters. This is kind of a more serious show, so I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but um, we're going to try to get through it because I, I could talk about serious things once in a while. Usually I just do a little tiny bit that's serious, but we'll just kind of put a spin on all of this stuff a little bit, okay? So anyway, we're going to talk about Afghanistan interpreters. We're also going to talk about whatever's in my notes. I did it. I didn't finish talking about it because I probably started talking about something else. So we're just going to skip over that. And we're going to go on to small talk. Oh, hold on. Let me move my peanut butter. For those of you who don't know, I live on peanut butter. Um, Nick Padilla, yay. Brad, yay. Peanut butter. Good stuff. Anyway, small talk move update. Like I said, I went over to the city of Hope. I'm not going to tell you all the details because I think I have it on my vlog, but um, I'm optimistic. I'm totally optimistic. This is a good thing. This is going to be great. Um, I did my body painting. You guys saw that. Oh, I had to look through like 800 pictures. How is that even possible? It took me forever. I didn't know which one to pick. He's like, well, pick two. And I'm like, two out of 800? How am I going to do that? And he's like, okay, well, then just pick one. I was like, that doesn't make it any better. Oh, my God. So I had to pick one, so I kind of picked six and said, okay, you pick two out of the six or one out of the six or, yeah, one out of four or whatever. Just, yeah, just one of these. So I guess that's the way it's going to work. Even though I get all these pictures, um, they're only going to, you know, do all the touch-up and stuff on the other ones. It's weird because, like, you're in the pictures, you're it, it, that white. It's like, like shoe polish or something. It gets in every single crack, like... Every teeny little crack on my face is covered with white paint. My butt, every little crack. It's just, yeah, it looks like all chalky and stuff. So I guess I touch all that up in the picture and smooth shit out. And God, hopefully they'll take off like 50 pounds off of me or something like that too. But, uh, and like I said, we're going to do the other themes. So that's going to be pretty exciting. And hopefully I'll have those up. I have some behind the scenes uh, pictures up on one of my Facebooks, I think. Oh, actually, on both of the Facebooks, there's behind-the-scenes pictures of when they're painting me and everything. Cindy Jensen was a makeup artist. She's absolutely amazing! Um, and so there's, like, some of the stuff that they do, except for my hoo-ha tape and stuff like that. So this is just, like, generic, put my face paint on, drawing shit on my boobs, blah, 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 blah. Well, that was really weird anyways, but yeah, go ahead and look at those. I'm going to also put up a bunch of pictures of... Um, um, Luciano, because he, like, all the artists and stuff, and, and then I'm going to put some of their tool pictures up, like this, his airbrush gun and all that kind of stuff, because that was really cool, because he did airbrush, like, all the little gills and stuff on me, or they look kind of like gills. Well, I guess they wouldn't be gills because it would be a dragon, so I'm not really sure what you got. Scales! That's it. Scales! So all the little scales and stuff, he did airbrush those on my body, so that was really cool. Um, it, when I was, uh, doing the... Well, well, you know, I was doing the um, the dragon and stuff like that. My friend Carl asked me what that was for and stuff. And I started explaining to him the personal aspect about it. And he sent a really cool, cool message to my kids because I told him I want them to be able to do what they need to do and, you know, kind of like be brave about it and stuff like that. You guys know that's always like my mission, try to be brave. I'm trying to waiting for that feeling where I felt brave. But he said, um, and this was, I guess, an Eleanor Roosevelt quote. He said... Um, let me see. Here, let me see. Uh, do what you feel to be right in your heart. You'll be criticized either way. I thought that was really good. That not that the truth, though? It's like you're, not everybody's ever going to be happy. So so go ahead and check out My Sick Boob. That's the vlog that I have there. And then I have some pictures. I think we put up uh, one of the centers I went to. Um, and I have some pictures of um not in the my, my sick boob gallery because that's just like going to be boob pictures but there's like another photo gallery on the website where you can look at some pictures that i have with valerie corral and stuff which is pretty cool anyway uh and let me see uh we were talking about that dumpster diving thing the last time i really started thinking about that and i'm going to start 
checking out different dumpsters because at first I thought, okay, with my luck, I'm just going to go jump in this one and I'm going to be start like throwing shit all over and getting all stinky and everything. And I'll be like, there ain't no food in here because they don't bake bread here. So I was thinking I better like start like checking out different dumpsters and making sure they have like a fresh bakery. So I think I'm going to like look at Albertsons and stuff like that. And there's like a couple of Stater Brothers that do, but there's like one or two that don't. So I don't want to be stuck in those ones. Um, <laughs> but I started thinking, okay, does it matter what neighborhood you're in when you're going to go to the store and stuff like that? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to like take somebody with me and let them film and see like they can hold the light too because I it's gonna be really hard for me to get in you know and then I, I don't okay but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it because I'm really curious to see if I can um, do that and I can't guarantee I'm gonna eat the food but eating the food is probably gonna be a whole other show okay and I'm gonna use the excuse that I have to be careful what I eat because I have a sick boob <laughs> no anyway um, <laughs> Michael, if you're watching this, you better get your fucking gas money together because we have to go look at some fucking dumpsters. We have to go surveying dumpsters all over Redland. So, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> um, I was, uh, as far as the Malaysia flight and all the crap going on all over the world, all the unrest and stuff, I'm sure you guys get bombarded with that, so I'm not even going to talk about that. The other thing I don't like to really talk about too much is, like, entertainment news. However, I am going to talk about Scott Disick. Is that how you say his name from the Kardashians? I guess he's married to Courtney. I used to watch that show, I think, but, you know, a lot of that stuff just goes in and out. You know, there's just, there's, doesn't stop between the ears at any point, you know. It's kind of just to pass time. <laughs> so um, anyway, Scott Disick, apparently he got like poisoned, got alcohol poisoning. <sighs> Go figure. He's always drinking. At least that's what they show on the show. But of course, you don't know if that shit's for real or not. Um, the funny thing is, is that um, they went and they he, he goes to the hospital, right? He says he thinks somebody drugged him. So they drug, they drug tested him too. He wasn't... Um, doesn't have any drugs. It was just alcohol poisoning. And it was just when Courtney had thrown him out. <sighs> wow. I wonder why she threw him out. Let's think. Who knows? Who knows with those women, right? Um, and uh, let me see. I guess Courtney took off to California right the next day. Didn't miss a beat or anything. And they're saying that it's a wake-up call for Scott. No, I don't think so. I really, really don't think so. Oh, he went to counseling. Yeah, right. Yep. And just to get her attention, and then she's going to go back and say, oh, man, he's really trying, blah, blah, blah. They're going to get back together, spend each other's money, and everything continues on. The cycle perpetuates. The only difference here is they have money to spend. Most other couples, they perpetuate that cycle, too. And, well, not most. But you know what I'm talking about. You know the people that I'm talking about that do this crap. You know what I mean? The ones that come over and you're like, Lord, do I have to hear it again? And you're just like kind of avoid them because you've already heard that story so many times and that just keeps going. Good. I think I've kind of been there once. Just, yeah, maybe. Kind of sort of a little bit-ish. But um, yeah, those, I don't know. It's crazy. It's crazy. I guess, you know, he just didn't see what happened to all the other guys in the Kardashian relationships. And he's all, hell no. I better figure this one out. Well, good for you, Sir Scott Disick. Yes. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about Garrett Holy. I think that's how you say his name. Um, he is, he has Down syndrome. He's 24 years old. He lives in Florida. And I believe it is that he wants to, um, let me see. Okay, he trains out of American Top Gym. Yep, that's where he trains. He's trained by a dude named Rodrigo Ramos. And he has this petition going around the internet because he wants to um, fight MMA. And um, the Florida State Boxing Commission has denied that many times. You know, they, they're not going to sanction it for whatever reason. Um, it's it's kind of funny, though, you know, because it's it's been done more than once. And it's... He has like a, a it's interesting because he has a sports background a little bit. You know, he's been in mainstream school a lot. Um, 
but I'm really not sure. They don't talk about it when they put out this petition because there's this petition that's circulating that you can go ahead and sign saying, yeah, let's go ahead and let him fight. Um, but it doesn't really say why they're, they're denying it. And I'm really not sure. Um, I guess I had to do a little bit more research. At first I was like, this is kind of weird, you know. And then I started researching it a little bit more. And um, I was just wondering how there were so many things to wonder about. Like the first thing I'm sitting there going, okay, so this guy has Down syndrome. And they talk about him and his personality and how he doesn't like to be associated with Down syndrome. Now who would? Really, who would? I mean, like even the word retard, which is kind of outdated and stuff, but when some people use it, it's such it's 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 such a nobody wants to be called that, right? No, nobody wants to be called a retard. So it's it's so negative. So um, but everybody has that there are things that they have to deal with as well. Um, but he made it very clear that he doesn't want to be looked at. I think it's more like he doesn't really want to be looked at or perceived as somebody with Down syndrome. And it's always an insult. I mean, it's not like somebody says, Oh gosh, you're such a you're a retard. Oh my god, it's so cute. No, it's always an insult. So I can see why he doesn't want to have the Down syndrome thing because we already know what that means. We're just we've just taken that word and once in a while just try to be a little bit more PC and to say Down syndrome. Anyway, um, he has the mentality of an eight or nine year old, somewhere in that range. Um, he's a higher functioning uh, Down syndrome person. So when I think about those two thoughts together, I'm thinking higher functioning eight to nine year old. So does that mean that he's like 10 or is he a higher functioning seven year? I, I'm really not sure exactly what they're trying to say there. Um, but both of those things came into play. So I was trying to figure that out and I'm thinking, huh. I mean, that being said, we've had the conversation before about young black belts, how it's, it, it's really ineffective in a lot of ways because there's certain parts of their brain that aren't developed that help them to make the decisions that are necessary in order to be a successful, or what I guess we would call a successful or proper um, black belt or, you know, have all those things intact. So I'm looking at this guy saying eight or nine year old. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Um, he reads at the level of a third grader or below. I, the way that these people word this information is just ridiculous. Um, third grade or below. So at some point or another, he read as good as a third grader, but maybe the rest of the time he's reading below. The fuck does that mean? Anyway, he can read. He can read. Yes, yes, yes. He also says that like if he's able to do this, which it doesn't really make much sense because on the petition it says, you know, that this allows him to kind of be self-sufficient, you know, to have a job, support himself and provide an income. But it's just talking about him fighting. So I don't really see how that possibly works out. It's not like he's going to get any of those fights where he's going to get millions of dollars or anything like that. I can't see that in his future. I mean, can you? So why would the petition even say that? And I'm sitting there going, did he even write this petition? I don't think he even wrote the petition because now we're talking about somebody who has a third grade reading level and, you know, the way it's written, it's like kind of like he's saying it and it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely misleading. So that led me, uh, you know, on, I'm like, okay, if he's got, yeah, this just doesn't make sense. The whole thing kind of doesn't fit together. So, that intrigued me even more, I must say. I mean, what do you think about that? Um, they're also saying that he has a real, he has a gap in his reaction time. I think that could cause some serious problems. <laughs> uh, and, you know, when fighting, but um, that he's competed in, you know, he had competed other times, several other times. He did actually have another fight. He found somebody that was, you know, the same size and I thought poor guy you know what I mean they're gonna be like dude you're fighting you're fighting a kid with disabilities you're beating up a kid with disabilities I mean what <laughs> the opponent like he's sitting there going oh damn how hard do I hit him I hit him I mean you know it's kind of weird I was wondering, I wonder what he went through or the challenges that he had to go through to actually put himself in the ring but I did watch the fight and it's pretty interesting, you know, like at, at, at one point, our friend here, he finally did wake up in the Garrett and he started doing what he needed to do. Um, and he, and he finished. So that was, that was good on his behalf and stuff. And yeah, he wasn't like totally beat up and he kind of things kind of started kicking into place for him and stuff. Um, 
so that that was pretty interesting. But you know, I'm wondering is I mean, is this an injustice um, to allow him to fight, or is it an injustice to deny him that? I mean, I'm I'm really not sure because I I was like, what's the goal here? What what really is the goal here if we have this kid fight, right? Right? Okay. Um, now, I mean, are, are we exploiting him? Is his family exploiting him? Because his dad's very involved in this whole thing. Um, which, you know, his dad is supportive. Um, and, you know, we all, including me, boob lady, I mean, we can be opportunists and stuff. But at, at what expense is it? You know what I mean? How, how is this working out? There's, there's two sides to this whole thing. So please, if you guys like watch this, like leave some comments because it's, it's pretty interesting. But go ahead, find him. I guess I'll try to post some more links. I do have the link for his petition on there. Um, it's weird because like when I go out, come out of the market, like, hey, lady, are you registered to vote? I'll be like, yeah, because I don't feel the need to lie. Well, come and sign this. Well, you know what? I'm not going to sign something that I have like 10 seconds to read and then just sign it. You know what I mean? I, I'm a little, I want to be... Okay, okay, fuck it. I'm not really that responsible. Let's let's be honest. I'm not responsible, but I'm going to read more than 10 seconds. Can you give me like four minutes? I don't have four minutes to read, so I'm not going to sign your fucking petition. So that being said, I, you know, it's like like anything else, it could be really misleading. So what is going on here with this petition? Do we really need to sign it or not? I mean, um, <laughs> it's just, it's, I, I'm, I'm wondering what, what, like I said, what is the intention and what is the motivation? You know what I'm saying? Um, his parents, I'm sure they get tons of shit from people saying, oh my God, you're crazy, you're letting him fight, blah, 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 blah. Yes, he says this is what he wants to do. I have to say, however, somebody that's eight years old is very impressionable. If I go to an eight-year-old and I tell him something over and over again, he will easily be able to, he'll believe that, he'll take that on and believe that, you know, because that's how it is. When you're younger, you believe what your parents say. You need to go to college, you need to do this, don't have premarital sex, blah, 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 blah. And that's where all the guilt trips come from because that's what you think is right. So is this kid thinking that fighting is going to be okay for him or what? I mean, you know what I'm saying? And if he's got the mentality of an eight to nine year old, is that why they're denying him? Because, you know, I mean, let's think about this whole thing. Um, and again, what my friend said, it doesn't matter. Do do what you feel is right in your heart because you're going to get criticized either way. So I see that as well. His dad ended up buying the gym, okay? He bought the whole damn gym and Garrett teaches there now. And I guess he has taken on another Down Syndrome kid uh, named DJ and um, he really enjoys it. So, I mean, you're thinking, I'm thinking, how much of the school does he really run? I mean, even his dad bought the school and he's, and he's supposedly, he's teaching there and he's doing this stuff or whatever. I mean, ultimately, I think it's his dad's, I see it as, okay, oops, sorry, it's his dad's venture and, uh, you know, I, I, eight or nine years old, he's not doing the books. I don't think he's putting together certain programs. I think he's basically showing up and teaching there and his dad's running the gym and I don't know. I don't know. Um, obviously, he doesn't, like I said, run it by himself. So um, I recently did an article, too, or I actually did an interview on a kid who uh, has, like, half of a heart or something like that. He actually got his black belt. Did I talk about this before? I might have talked about this before. But he was, like, getting his, having his black belt test done over in... Uh, Crap, can't remember. Anyway, oh, San Jose. San Jose. And um, he goes to one of Ernie Reyes Jr.'s um, studio. So he's like the Ninja Turtle guy. Um, and he, I think he's maybe 10 or 11 and he's getting his black belt. But they have to have like medical people there and keep checking this and keep checking that. So again, you know, what are we doing? Or do we need to like start thinking like the opposite direction? And do we need to set up a special needs class for these people that want to do these things because they don't have them right now. This is not something that's available to them. So I don't know. So I'm going to post that stuff 
And please comment because I really want to know what you think about it. It's kind of weird when you start thinking about all the details and stuff like that. Um, but um, the, here's another serious one, the Afghanistan interpreters. I posted that as like a this documentary. Sorry, I had to post it in five parts because when it first came out, it was in five parts and I didn't see the whole thing that said, okay, here's the whole documentary. But it's a really good documentary. It's on Vice. Oh, speaking of documentaries, before I forget, The Hornet's Nest. I did an interview. Um, this is... Um, I did an interview of the director, Christ Christian Turo, um, for The Hornet's Nest. It's a documentary, and they actually use actual footage from um, uh, the war in Afghanistan, which was really cool. So I went to go see that, and he just recently told me that they're in the running for an Academy Award. Yay! I guess he can't do much, like, promotion. It's, like, against the rules or whatever right now. So, um, but I'm pretty excited for him, but it is going to be out on DVD. So... Um, if you guys get a chance, check that out, The Hornet's Nest. Um, yes, okay, so moving along. So we're talking about, I guess, Afghanistan interpreters. Crazy as it is, yeah. So they, they apparently what's happening is, let me see if I can get this all right. Let me see. I guess they originally, you know, these people, uh, these Afga these people from Afghanistan or Afghanistan, whatever, I'll, sorry, Okay. Anyway, they take the job, they're going to be an interpreter, and um, I guess the U.S., they thought that the U.S. would go ahead and defeat the Taliban, you know, uh, their communities would be restored, and everybody would live happily ever after. At least that was the story that was relayed to them. That's how they kind of thought that things were going to, going to work out, you know, but it didn't work out that way. Not so much, because uh, now we're getting out of there, and... Uh, they don't have a job anymore. They don't have um, visas or any way to take care of themselves. Um, it, it's really pretty sad. You know, at the beginning, you can hear this guy talk about how he, like, he made friends and he's seen them all get killed for being interpreters and, and all kinds of other things. Um, it, they said that, you know, they're in fear of when uh, the U.S. does um, leave because then for sure that they're going to they're gonna go ahead and lose their lives and, and they'll be killed at that point. And I guess they're they're making approximately fourteen or fifteen thousand uh, dollars for this job. I'm assuming that's a year, uh, which they could probably make more over working at McDonald's over here. Yeah. Instead, they went ahead and took this job, and now their lives are in jeopardy. Um, let me see. They're considered traitors, spies. Uh, let me see. Their families get threatened. They feel that they're basically feel that their lives are over now. You know what I mean? Um, they don't really have the support that, and, and they're not in the position that they told that, that they were told that they would be, uh, because a lot of them. What, what has happened? Um, many of them worked on the on the front lines, assisting the troops and stuff, and they'd go through the whole rotation. Some of them were there like twelve years and stuff, working for people, um, and they really helped to uh, bridge the the communication between the community um, and and the, the, the foreign forces. So, you know, uh, they show actually on this documentary how they um, help with that. And also, as far as Taliban intelligence, you know, they can, they can help so that they can uh, interpret all that stuff effectively within the drop of a hat. So, yeah, anyway, I guess they're supposed to have this special immigrants visa program so that they would apply for it and they would get this visa and they'd be able to come to the U.S. and then they get some kind of, uh, I wouldn't say restitution, but they get some kind of funding, in other words, to live and get set up and so forth. Um, but what's happening is no visas are getting issued, which is really, really sad. So they have four conditions that they have to meet. And those four condition, conditions are they have to be a national of Afghanistan. They have to be employed by the U.S. government or have been employed by the U.S. government. They have to have provided faithful and invaluable service to the United States. And they have to have experienced ongoing and serious threat. So in this, they show all the people carrying around all these documents um, where their files are complete and everything, and they're thinking, okay, cool, you know, we're this, this is it, I got my shit together, send it in. They get a letter saying, yeah, we received your application, we processed it, everything's going good, blah, 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 wait for your visa, they wait, they wait, they wait, they wait, they wait. 
No fucking visa. No fucking visa. Nope. Yeah. Visa's not getting there. No. Not going to get there. Um, the visas are denied. Yep. And, you know, they have all kinds of ext extensive documents, like letters from people saying how they provided this amazing service and how they worked and they did this and, and they saved this person's life and so forth and so on, and their visas just get denied. It's crazy. Um, the only people that have got really their visas, um, well, that's happened because a veteran has kind of taken it into their own hands and made sure that they made it through all that red tape. They they say in the in the documentary that there's really no motivation for um, somebody to approve this stuff. You know, the Department of Defense does not view them as veterans, and it's really not important. However, um, they say that you know they believe that a lot of the other guys would disagree because they were there with them. And um, there's this, this guy Matt and and um, Janice. I guess Matt is um, the veteran, and Janice is who he helped to get out of there. He was an interpreter, and he um, Janice had saved Matt's life, and Matt just swore that he was going to make sure he helped him. So it took him three years to get Janice's visa, but now they're helping other people, and they have a lot of other people reaching out to them, um, so that they can help them with this. Uh, they they had one guy that had letters saying he he had worked for twenty twelve senators twelve U S senators and he he couldn't get him out so anyway it took um what happened with Matt and Janice was Matt took it to the media and um they said that that can't be duplicated again however it did help for him um and now they just continue to work with other people so uh, they go and they interview a lot of different people uh, as well on this um, documentary which is really interesting it's pretty sad it really is um, I guess there's a, a group of senators and uh, representatives that were going to go ahead and reform this this um, SIV program so that we, it would make it easier for these people to get out and be safe and um, have a life again, but uh, that isn't going so well. They were also going to ask for an extension of the program because the program is is actually ending um, very very soon um, this year, as a matter of fact. Uh, they were uh, the other things they were saying is it really is bad for our reputation to leave these guys behind, you know, and it hinders the ability for us to get help. Or assistance in the future because nobody's going to want to do this because they're going to look back and say wow you know you guys you promised them this and that and you, and you didn't get that stuff done so you know now now what so why would we want to help you at that cost you know what I'm saying um, and and the cost is high like I said there's, there's guys that say oh yeah we just leave our families and we go we, we just take off we go wherever we can um, but no new legislation legislation has been introduced at this time um, there's a lot of bickering about it because it has to do with the immigration law and stuff like that. So it's pretty much been tabled. And the current program is going to be over in September, I believe. Yeah, September of this year. So that is really, really sad. Um, you know, they, they do have, uh, on the documentary, talk, the Taliban is talking about how they view these guys as traitors and things like that. And the, the punishment for that is death. Yeah, and so they pretty much, you know, they'll behead him, they'll kill him or whatever, and they record it, and they put it on YouTube, and there it is. So, you know, if you have any doubt, then it's right there for you to look at, which, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The crazy thing about it is, just like when I, I did the report on the VA hospital and had the one gentleman, he said, he kept telling his kids, no, VA is going to call me, I'm going to get my appointment and so forth and so on, that that was going to happen, and he waited, and he waited, and he ended up dying. And after he fucking died, then they call and say, oh, yeah, by the way, we got that note that you guys need an appointment. Yeah, you know what? We're going to be taking care of that really soon. He's dead, okay? The whole time he said, nope, you know, my government would not let me down, blah, 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 blah. He was very uh, patriotic, and he had that... Um, that trust, you know, um, that he that he would be okay. These guys are the same, you know. There's some of them that say, you know, we're proud that we worked with the U.S. forces and NATO, and um, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. On Blaine's show, we were just talking about that, um, or he was talking about that today with Paul Chabot, and he was just saying, you know, how he is so proud and 
Like he's all glad to be an American and all that kind of stuff and everything, which is very cool. Very cool. Um, but still, anyways, back to back to this. I forgot where I was going to take off on another tangent, but I figured I better get back to this. Anyways, um, there are uh, 280 visas left that have to be issued, I think, um, by July. So the end of this month, they got a couple weeks, right? And there are six thousand applicants and it doesn't look like there's going to be any law put in place or anything's going to be extended or any of that stuff at this point so that itself is pretty bad some of them do opt to get smuggled out of the country um, because they can't wait you know their lives are in danger it costs a lot of money and if they don't have money to get the fake visa and all that shit they just find some kind of way it's about twenty five thousand dollars or something like that they just find, or $20,000, they find some way to escape, or maybe they'll go to Greece for a while, and um, there's, they live outside, and then they find somebody to take them a little bit further, and and it's crazy. I mean, they show this one guy that's living in this old abandoned mattress factory. Apparently, um, at one point, there were like up to 500 people that were living there, and, you know, it's, it's, it's insane. You know, they will get like they will go sit in the wheel wells of trucks to to get from place to place or whatever they need to do um, it's definitely not safe it's a very sad situation um, it's a sad situation yeah it is um, but yeah check out the documentary tell me what you think um, and yeah, that's it for that topic so um, I was going to talk about plastic surgery, so we'll talk about that for a while. Uh, I was wondering, you know, because I was watching like that Kylie Jenner or whatever, and they're saying how she had plastic surgery, and I was going to look up some stuff because I was like, what, what, what is too young, you know, to have plastic surgery? I mean, when, when do you, I mean, no, I, I, I just, I mean, I don't, oh. You know, people always say, oh, yeah, I, I, I totally love my body. You know, it trips me out when you have people that are like 250 pounds and they're like, yeah, I, I, I'm totally happy this way, completely happy this way, and I, I have a hard time understanding that. I have a hard time figuring that out, not so much just from the, the aesthetic or, or, you know, or the outside, like how it looks on the outside, not just that, but there, I, there's a lot of health issues um, and a lot of other things that go on as far as like fatigue, uh, your ability to move, play with your kids and all that stuff. Um, I have a hard time understanding how that is okay. Um, but even though if you're like at a good weight and stuff like that, there are things that you always want to change about yourself. You say, oh, you should be happy with the way you are. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm happy with like how I am, but there are things that I would like to change about me that I can't change. And I, and I know that it, it's not just women. Maybe women are more vocal about it, but it's not just women. I don't think that want to change. Um, but how young is too young for plastic surgery? Uh, I mean, do you do it for 13 year old for 15 year old? I mean, I'm even surprised at the young people that have like that gastric bypass and they're really, really young or they have all that stuff that you, the lap band and all that shit and stuff to lose weight, you know? I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, do you walk in and say, oh yeah, we're going to go for the mother-daughter boob job. I mean, is that what happens? Um, and how does that work out? I mean, do, I, like, I know my boobs change after I had kids too. So like I had more boobs after I had kids and stuff and I didn't really have boobs really that much before so I mean, what happens when 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 that goes on I mean um, and like I'm thinking they're thinking going okay I, I think Kris Jenner is a type of mom that would say oh yeah I think that if you think it's gonna make you feel better since we have that money and it's just really you know it's pocket change let's just go ahead and do it what do you want to change on you today what is that saying for you too again we're talking about like your brain. I mean, are you in a position to really make that kind of a choice? I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, go, hey, yeah, let's just go get some boobs. Fuck it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then maybe another, you know, you kind of have outgrown those 36 double Ds. I mean, I think we should upgrade. Yeah. Let's, let's upgrade. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, oh, you know what? 
you're almost 18. Let's get some Botox. You're just getting like, I mean, when does that start? You know what I mean? I and mean, what's going to be the standard anymore? Um, how does that work? No, I don't have any work done on my face. I, I, I would like to. Like, I have all these little wrinkly things of hair and stuff. But, um, oh, and these little things on the side. Anyway, um, but I'm 50. I'm 50. There's a difference. There's kids that are 14 years old having boob jobs. And I think you're kind of confirming the idea that they think, okay, my body's not good enough. You know, there's like, it's like this number line and we have to figure out where is the healthy range. You know what I mean? Because it's okay to want to change stuff. Like, it's okay to say, okay, you know, I want to lose 10 more pounds. That, that's good. You know, that's like, that's realistic. And if it's going to leave you in a healthy way and everything, that's something that's realistic that you want to change about yourself. That's a good thing. Okay. But if you're sitting there, you know, saying, I, I weigh... 150 pounds and I want to lose 100 pounds, obviously that's not very realistic, you know what I mean? That's not very healthy or, you know, the people that are like 110 pounds and they want to be down 80 pounds, that's obviously not very realistic. So we have to ha be able to um, figure out what's going to work. But, you know, we're, people don't even look like what they, oh my gosh, some people just don't even look the same at all. And I realize like your face does change and stuff through time. I mean, it never stops changing, but that combined with the plastic surgery, it's just making it crazy. I don't know. What do you think? Would you take your, your daughter to get boobs or, or like a, like parents, I can see parents are separated. And then one of them says, you know what? I'm just going to get her boobs for her 16th birthday. And then you have the whole sex thing come into play because then you're kind of like boobs, sex, boobs, sex, boobs, sex, boobs. You know what I mean? Nipple, sex, no nipple, not sex, da 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 da, all that stuff. So, if you're getting your daughter boobs, it has to do with sex. She wants to be sexually appealing. So, are you like throwing her in there? And then, you know, what's the message that you're sending her? Again. Um, and then, how is she going to come out of that? You know, because now she's got these boobs. Now she's going to get all this attention and everything because. She's got boobs and she's 16 and does she know how to process that? So it's not a matter of you look better in that sweater today than you did yesterday. No, that's not where we're going with this thing. That's not how it's going to work. It's like you look more sexually alluring in that sweater and now you're going to get hit on a lot more and you're going to get in a lot more trouble. Yes, I said trouble because we all know how it works. This is no fucking joke. <laughs> Especially at that age, we're talking about sex. Just sex, 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 sex. You know what I mean? Um, you could just be overrun with sex. Yep, at that age. Yeah, uh huh. All of them hit them and quit them. But, um, and uh, that, so you got a whole other problem going on. You got a whole other problem going on. So that's kind, that kind of stuff just amazes me. Um, but yeah, there's lots of stuff. I know when I was going to make my plastic surgery appointment at this last doctor, um, they said, oh yeah, we have a mother and a daughter that are coming in at a particular time. Now, I don't know if that daughter was 30 or 13, but, um, you know, of course, my mind think thinking she's, excuse me, oh shit, it's late. Uh, I, like she's late, um, the, oh shit, sorry. Ooh, lost it. Anyway, uh, the, <laughs> ah, oh, yeah, anyway, let's move on from that plastic surgery subject just a little bit. Just a little bit. I was going to talk about boxing a little bit. I know I'm going back and forth to do this too because I was talking about the beginning. So I was watching this boxing match because, you know, I, I went to like the MMA uh, fights the last week and stuff. So I'm watching boxing and I'm sitting there going, I used to watch a lot of boxing. And I'm sitting there thinking, Fuck, this is kind of fucking boring now, you know? I mean, it it was boring, and I know I'm probably really wrong here, but I'm thinking, like, they're just working, like, just, it's, it's all, I know there's some lower body stuff going on there, but in comparison to tick, tick boxing, <laughs> the fuck is that? <laughs> Muay Thai or kickboxing or stuff like that where you know you're, you're kicking and you're punching and all this stuff is going on it just seemed really very slow moving it was like oh, I think I was doing my show in slow motion 
That's pretty good, huh? Anyway, so that's what it seemed like, and I'm sitting there going, watching the boxing, thinking it's kind of boring and stuff, um, and kind of trying to make all these inside stories and, and read too much into it and everything. Um, the crowd wasn't, well, the person that I, that I was there with, he said, you know, the crowd is usually bigger. Um, it wasn't that big tonight, but I'm just wondering, you know, is that something that's on its way out? Um, because it, and I think it has to do a lot with the generation. You know what I mean? We want a lot more action and we want things instant and we want this and that to happen. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just not so much in boxing because when I went to the fights, Last week, um, a lot of them were, you know, they're won by knockout. And we're talking about it did, it did not take a whole hell of a long time. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know if anybody finished all the rounds, to be honest. Um, but it is that kind of an action-packed thing going on. And I, and I was sitting there, I was, there were amateur MMA fights and the stuff's going on. So, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that boxing is on its way out? Do you think it still has, um, you know, some longevity left here or, or what? Because um, just my mind in itself, I just felt like it was a little bit slow running. And I'm wondering, you know, what other sports are going to um, be out before long? The other thing I was noticing, too, is that, like, in, in boxing, you know, a lot of it, I would say... You know, we were talking about 70% were like hits to, you know, um, face, head, whatever. Uh, and the rest of them maybe body punches or whatever. So I'm sitting there thinking, you know, that's crazy. I mean, that's crazy to think about that. And again, uh, I'm looking at all the MMA and all that crap. And um, it, it's more than that. Yeah, you get your head beat in. This is true. This is true. Um, but is it really more than boxing or not so much or what? You know what I mean? There's a lot more going on. It's a lot more, it's engaging your entire body and, um, to, I mean, and it, to this incredible level. So, um, yeah, I thought that was all, all my thoughts that were going that way. It was just very, very different. And I think that it would be hard to get sponsors for that stuff. You know, I think it would have to be some kind of a, um, something that will have to have um, different different levels. Like I said, UFC, MMA, all that crap going on, whatever, Muay Thai, um, stuff like that. Um, all those different things in order for somebody to come in and sponsor something like that. So, yeah, hold on to your seconds. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I really have a few minutes. So let's talk to you about something relationshipy. Okay, we're going to talk about the texting thing again. Because so many times I'm texting and people think I'm mad at them. I'm really not mad. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of things. So much is lost in texting. Um, today, I, ooh, shit. Today I was going to text somebody and say, why haven't you talked to me? Because blah, 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 blah. And just when I text them, I, hey there, which is like just driving me insane because I walk outside and my kids are like, hey there, mom. And I'm like, I want to say F you. And I'm just kidding. Now, um, <laughs> uh, but so I text him, but hey there. And he came back with this response and I, it was really, really sad. And he's having a fucked up day and a fucked up life and a fucked up last few months. And I really feel sorry for him and I can't connect to him. But that's a whole other topic. Let's talk about right now how like texting gets so misconstrued. Here's the thing. You're going to interpret the text based on the way you're feeling. So if you're having a shitty day and I say, fuck you, you're going to be like, fuck you? Really? What's the problem here? What did I do? Or whatever, wherever you're at, like if you're like if you're in if you're at pissed off, you're gonna be like, what the fuck is she doing? What what does she mean? Fuck you, you know? Or let's say you're you know you're feeling really sad about something, and you're like, oh my god, what did I do? Or feeling insecure or whatever, or it could be fuck you. Are you kidding me? What do you fuck you do? You know what I mean? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You just get your phone. You're like, fuck you. But anyways, it just depends. You just don't know, right? You don't know. So then, I mean, it's just like, like you know, when you're little and you just say, like, the word, like, caca and so, like, shit and all that stuff, and you're saying caca, like, you could just say, yeah, that 
that smells like caca or whatever. But you can be like, caca, caca. It's like, fuck. It's like, you have a lot of... So when you're talking, so it's, it's completely different. It's completely different. But yeah, you, the, how you text message has a lot to do with stuff. So I'm like trying to ask somebody something, direct questions. And some people are like, don't send me these fucking messages that are like 2,000 words. I don't want to read them. I don't want to read them all. Because it's going to take me a long time to read them. And then usually when people are texting, they don't do complete sentences. There's no periods. There's no punctuation. I don't understand all the shorthand. I don't understand all the acronyms. So I'm getting maybe 10% of what you're trying to say to me. Do you get it? Do you get it? If you don't respond, depending on the mood I'm in, if I'm feeling really sorry for myself, you don't respond. I'm like, <sighs> He hates me now. Ugh. That could be a point. Or, uh, I might not even care. Because I might be texting 8,000 other people. I didn't even realize that you didn't text me back. It just depends. Everything is relative. Except when you're talking to somebody. Here's the thing. When you're talking to somebody, you have, like, you have, like, multiple tools. So you can watch the way they move. By the way, if somebody holds my hands or makes me stay still, I really can't talk. I'll just gotta be... Like, when they were painting my body, I was like... I was like, no, go ahead, keep talking. I was like... Couldn't do it. And <laughs> so... Like, so if I'm talking to you or whatever, I can look at your body language and... <laughs> I love you. Yeah. You're great. Now, <laughs> I can read your body language uh, and kind of take that and the tone in your voice, you know what I mean, and uh, be able to put it together to get the most accurate message possible. That's why I'm still waiting for that. Oh, my ring was killing me out. My navel. Anyway, um, I'm waiting for that sarcasm font because I really need it. Or, um, like, an angry font, because caps is no longer working. No. Caps used to be yelling. If it's in caps, you're yelling. You're yelling. Mm -hmm. Hey there! You're yelling. On caps! Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Um, but, uh, so, this, yeah, this whole texting thing is just, it, it's bizarre, because I, I'm like, I'm just trying to get accurate information. And it doesn't matter, I'll be like, can you call me? Oh, yeah, I'll call you in 30 minutes. Okay. Let me get something to eat. I'll call you. I'll call you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, instead you're going to send me a gazillion texts and I don't even know how they work or, or what. You know, there's a certain time where text works and a certain time the text doesn't. And you know what? I think like if you're saying, hey, what do you want from Taco Bell? It works fucking fine. It is fucking fabulous. Okay? If you're saying something like, um, I don't know, you know, um, you know, did you get this, did you get this thing done, or, or are we going to go to this, I don't know, there's just certain things that, you know what I mean, like the questions, the, yeah, the, the need to be done in person, or you need to be able to see it. All that being said, there are people that read, you know, like psychics and stuff like that, people that know stuff, and, um, uh, that is kind of just an extension of being able to read your body language, as far as I'm concerned. It's an extension of being able to read body language and somebody's energy. So, that being said, I think that we're losing it because we're not really in front of people anymore. We're in front of webcams. Yeah. And we're, uh, which is better than texting, but, um, <laughs> so I send people, I send everybody webcam messages. Well, they, won't they be happy, right? Don't listen to it at work. Shh. Oh my god, I got a message from Jab. Don't listen to it at work. I only know what it's going to say. I'm just going to be screaming. But anyway, um, <laughs> the fuck was I saying? <laughs> uh, it's just way too late to be recording this. Yes, it is. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to do it. And I've almost finished. I've got 53 minutes. So, um, <laughs> anyways, so readers aren't going to be able to read. People aren't going to be able to read body language anymore because we don't practice it. And anything that we get better at is because we're getting better at it because we're practicing it and we're using it. So if we do not get out and engage with people, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, that's one of the things I love to do. I go out and are like, okay, you're always on the go. You're here going here and you're going there. Yeah, I'm meeting people. Um, and God, I meet the most amazing people, um, but you know they can talk to me and see me, and I can get to know them in a different way than just over the phone. Yeah, Facebook is great. I have some amazing Facebook friends, but 
it's there's nothing it's nothing like meeting somebody in person um, and being able to have like that full you know to get like I don't want to say the total package because that's like really you know that's not exactly what I'm saying but you get you know all these different avenues to learn what they're about because I've looked at somebody and I thought, Oh God, that, that kind of funky looking. I've had this conversation before, and they, I mean, they have the most amazing energy, and so um, their energy kind of just conveys the whole story to me. So, yeah. So, um, it, and then you know what happens when somebody doesn't answer you? Hmm. Huh. And how long is like okay? Like okay, like is if they don't answer you for ten minutes, does that matter, or is it thirty minutes? or six hours, or days, when do you start thinking, mm, maybe they don't want to talk to me? You know what I don't like, though? I really fucking hate, like, if you're having this conversation with somebody and they just go, poof, they're gone. Is it really that challenging to say, hey, I gotta go, or good night, or I'll talk to you later, or my lunch break is over, or fuck you, fuck off and die, go jump off a bridge, Whatever. I mean, is there? can you just give some kind of courteous or uncourteous salutation or let me know that you're not talking to me anymore or whatever it is? Um, that would be much appreciated. Okay, now I know everybody's out there going, you never do that, Jim. You never did. Well, you guys know. Not just, I'm not saying guys like guys, guys, but I can text forever. I can text for days, okay? So if you're, if you're texting me most of the time, I can text for days if it's, like, good. If it's just, like, don't ask me like, oh, um, like, uh, what's been going on lately? <laughs> really? You want me to text that? I'll be sitting here for forever. I don't even bother. I, yeah, that's just not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Send me your thoughts on all that texting bullshit. Blah blah blah. On and on. Um, check out that petition uh, for Garrett. Tell me what you think about that. Um, like I said, I don't just randomly, well, okay, I'm not going to lie, if it's something about, like, killing animals or something, there's not, uh, I'll pretty much sign it, because if it's not going to say not to kill something, because, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not really sure that there's really going to be a backstory that's going to say, uh, yeah, um, it's a good idea to go ahead and kill these guys. To take anybody or anything's life, I'm just really not sure there's a good backstory on that, so. That being said, again, check that out. I did reach out to him. I made a phone call over to his dojo. Um, you know, I think that um, he, he himself, I think he's doing an amazing job um, and stuff. So um, it needs to be acknowledged. And, and, really, and seriously, I know I was just like, it sounds like I'm always a goofball. Do we need like the special needs classes for, for you know, in martial arts? I mean, how, crazy right I mean I think I think we should look at that you know and in gyms and things like that um, because yes they are part of that obese epidemic um, anyway that being said I didn't get to tell you um, one of my stories about it's a great life but I'll be able to do that the next time I do want to tell you about my dad and stuff today I was driving back and I went by this motel six because I was over in Whittier and supposedly that was the last place that my dad um, slept that they knew that he slept before he passed away so um, hopefully I remember to tell you that um, later on um, my friend's dad passed away uh, today that's why I didn't get to record earlier I I'm not really sure what happened or anything because he won't talk to me, so I'm really sad about that. Um, but, you know, again, um, while he doesn't always answer my texts and everything, I'm still going to keep texting until he tells me to fuck off and die because I just think he's not in a good place. And, again, um, you know what I say about, you know, there's nothing more important than people, and when we forget that, then we're pretty much fucked. So, uh, that being said, a special thanks to Blaine, who is kind of taking me on like this little orphan girl over at his radio station, and I love it. Um, James, who invited me to fight the channel, who's still working on the body painting and stuff like that. Cindy, who did the makeup? Michael, I don't know what I'm thanking you for. Maybe I'll just give you a big fuck you, Michael. Yeah. Loving it. Uh, <laughs> my amazing kids that put up with me and that are raising me make sure that I eat and do my chores. I love them so much. And of course, for all my future supporters who don't even know that you're going to be supporting me later on. 
Thank you very much. Um, and this is Jem, and I'm sitting here with everything I need, and it's 2.38 in the morning, and I'm sleepy, and I don't think I'm going to be able to go to sleep now, but I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to update my vlog with my health update, and um, hopefully before you know it, I'm going to get new boobs. It's going to be great, and I'm going to have some more body painting coming up. So, yes, and I have all kinds of stuff to talk to you about music because I love music, and music is amazing. So we're going to be having, like, a whole music show, and people are going to get to submit music, and... At some point, I'm going to have to make some money. I'm not sure how exactly, but the universe will take care of it. The universe always does. So um, and let me see. What am I supposed to say? Like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Um, this is Jen, again, signing off for everything I need.